Here are some of my favorite waxy all-in-one emulsifiers that I recommend for beginners. Freedomulse SCG, also known as Ecomulse. Emulsifying Wax NF or Emulsifying Wax, BTMS 50, 11 1000, and Glycerol Stearate and PEG 100 Stearate. Readamulse SCG slash Ecomulse. This is my personal favorite all-in-one emulsifier to use for face moisturizers. It's vegan, EcoCert, and considered natural by most people, but this depends on what your definition of natural is. This is kind of the reason why I'm putting it at the top of this list. I think it checks off a lot of boxes for a lot of different people. This is my number one recommendation for beginners to use, and it's typically my go-to emulsifier. I think it makes great face moisturizers for anybody with any skin type. Emulsifying Wax NF slash Emulsifying Wax. This is my number one recommendation if you don't care about being eco cert or natural. This was the first emulsifier that I started using myself and it's extremely reliable. I've never had a failed emulsion when using this emulsifier. And this is probably why it's my number one recommendation for those of you who are beginners who don't care about being natural or eco cert. You can also purchase this from basically most suppliers so it makes it really easy to find too. BTMS 50. This ingredient is perfect for those of you who are trying to make a wide range of products with just one ingredient. This ingredient not only makes creams and lotions and moisturizers, but it also makes amazing hair conditioners. So if you're on a budget and can only purchase minimal ingredients, I think this is the perfect emulsifier for you. Personally, I love using this emulsifier in body lotions because it leaves this like powdery, velvety feeling on your skin, which this comes from the fact that it is a cationic surfactant and it being cationic is what makes it great to be used in a hair conditioner. So if you don't care about being naturally compliant or eco cert, BTMS 50 is perfect for you if you're on a budget and only wanna purchase minimal ingredients. You can make lotions, creams, moisturizers, but also hair conditioners using it. 11 1000. So I personally don't really have much to say about this emulsifier because I don't have too much experience with it. It is known to have more of a soaping effect compared to other emulsifiers. What I mean by soaping is that it takes longer to rub in and it leaves kind of this like white cast on the skin, which this can happen with basically any emulsifier, but apparently it happens a lot with 11 1000. But don't let that discourage you from trying the emulsifier because I've heard from a lot of people that they swear by this emulsifier, it's their go-to, they're always using it. So a lot of people do have great experiences with it. And of course there are perks to this emulsifier. It is EcoCert and naturally compliant if that's something you're looking for. Glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. This emulsifier is perfect to create thinner emulsions. And I actually have a video talking pretty in depth about this emulsifier. It's my video titled how to make body milks for beginners and I go into a lot of detail about this ingredient. If you guys want to go watch that, I have it linked down below. But this ingredient is also like the secret ingredient that store-bought body butters use to create that body butter texture while doing an emulsion. Traditional home crafted body butters are usually Anhydrous only contain oil soluble ingredients, but store bought body butters just have this like unique texture to it. And it's the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate that's like their secret. And I do have a tree hut, a body butter dupe here on my channel where I'm using this ingredient. So if you want to watch that one as well, link below. Honestly, I could say a lot about this emulsifier. It's kind of one of my go to emulsifiers that I need to have in my collection because it does create these unique emulsions. All right, let's get into more details about each of these emulsifiers in case you want to learn more. We'll start with Aretamulse SCG slash Ecomulse. This emulsifier is EcoCert and it's considered natural to many people, but again, depends on your definition of natural. Vegan, its suggested usage rate is two to 10%. And the full inky name, INCI, is glycerol stearate, satyral alcohol, 
and sodium steryl lactylates. It contains 55 to 65% glycerol stearate, 20 to 30% satyryl alcohol, and 10 to 20% sodium steryl lactylate. Sorry for my pronunciation of any of those if, if it's wrong. So this emulsifier contains no ethoxylated ingredients. It has no HLB value, which if you remember, I briefly mentioned HLB in my last video. And typically uh, oil and water emulsifiers have high HLBs, but sometimes emulsifiers don't have an HLB and this emulsifier is one of those. This emulsifier is anionic, and if you wanna learn more about the different types of surfactants, anionic, non-ionic, cationic, and amphoteric, I have a video all about that. I'll have it linked down below. This emulsifier is stable in products with a pH between five to 7.5, which again, if you wanna learn more about pH, I have a video all about that, link below. Emulsifying wax slash emulsifying wax in F. This is not considered natural or eco-cert. It is vegan. Its recommended usage rate is approximately 25% of your oil phase plus 1%. So for example, if your formulation has 24% oils, not including the emulsifying wax, then you want to add 6% plus 1%, which means 7% emulsifying wax to your oil phase. The INCI or inky name is satyro alcohol and a polysorbate 60, or it might just say emulsifying wax and F. And it contains 70 to 80% satyro alcohol and 20 to 30% polysorbate 60. So this ingredient can go by a few different names like emulsifying wax, emulsifying wax and F, polywax, or polywax emulsifying wax. There are lots of different all-in-one emulsifiers that might also be sold under a similar name, but actually contains different ingredients. So make sure you're reading the INCI or the inky name to make sure you're actually buying the emulsifying wax that has satyryl alcohol and polysorbate 60. There are, like I said, very similar ingredients like um, emulsifying wax C20 and emulsifying wax soft and silky that are not the same as emulsifying wax in F or emulsifying wax. You always gotta read the inky name because different suppliers use different names. This emulsifier does contain ethoxylated ingredients, polysorbate 60. It's non-ionic. Its HLB is 14.9 and it's stable in products with a pH between three to 13. BTMS 50. This is not considered natural or eco-cert. It is vegan. Its recommended usage rate is one to 10% or up to 25%. Its inky name is, I'm just not even gonna try to pronounce this. There you go. This ingredient is different from BTMS 25. It contains no ethoxylated ingredients. It is cationic, which means it's conditioning and it has no HLB and it's stable in products with a pH between three to six. I live in 1000. This is EcoCert and it's considered natural by many people, but depends on what your definition of natural is. It's vegan, its maximum usage rate is 25%, three to 4% in like serums and lotions, seven to 8% for lotions and creams. Its inky name is Satyryl Elevates and Sorbitin Elevates. Sorry if I mispronounced any of that. The exact percentage uh, of each of these ingredients is actually withheld as a trade secret, so we don't know. Um, it contains no ethoxylated ingredients. It's non-ionic and its HLB is nine, but it's based on liquid crystal formation. And that's something I could get into later in this emulsifier series if you want. HLB is not critical for this emulsifier, so. Again, this is why you don't really need to understand HLB to create emulsions. It's just kind of something that's there and it's something that used to be required. But with the modernization of skincare ingredients, it's we don't really need the HLB as much, but it's still something you can learn about. It's stable in a pH between three to 12. Glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearates. This is not considered natural or eco-cert. It's vegan. Its recommended usage rate is one to 5%, but this can vary depending on the supplier's recommendation. Its inky name is 
glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. It can go by many different names depending on the supplier. It contains ethoxylated ingredients, the PEG 100 stearates. It's non-ionic and the HLB is 11.2 and it's stable in products with a pH between 4.5 to 9. So those are all the emulsifiers that I recommend to beginners. Come back for my next video, which is going to be about the key ingredients to making the perfect moisturizer. See you guys there. Don't forget to go over and check me out over on Patreon where I post two bonus videos every single month. So there is so much content that you guys can go binge watch over there just for $5 a month. And for $10 a month, you can get a small business shout out. So let's shout out the small businesses. Nature's Farm Girl, thank you so much. Also, everybody's links will be in the description box. Let's blend hempygirl.com thank you seventh house and oak on etsy at black petal beauty on instagram owl and lily on etsy zayalamore.com i hope i said that right embrace beauty essentials.com at stardust bath and body on instagram and that is it thank you so much if you would like a small business shout out go over to my patreon